What's up agents, Zero here. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be giving you guys a command block tutorial on how to set up player direction detection. You heard me correctly, player direction detection. Now this has been in Java for quite some time, however, because I'm technically on Bedrock Edition uh, when I record these videos, I actually don't know how long we've had this available. Honestly, I don't know uh, when it was implemented, but I only just recently realized that we have this feature. Now, for those of you who do not know what play direction detection is, because the name itself should be pretty much self-explanatory, but if you need further instructions for that, um, basically it's a command that you set up that detects what direction the player is facing is actually useful for map making now I myself I have no ideas for maps as of right now but I can probably think of a few examples of how map makers can probably end up using it. I might uh, do a uh, video or two in sometime in the future figuring that out but yeah so this is actually a fairly straightforward command however it can get pretty complicated because it involves a lot of trial and error on uh, Java Edition, you actually have the ability to uh, pull up a debug menu and be able to take a look at what directions you're actually facing your uh, directions like X, Z, and Y. What basically you can see what direction you're facing on jo on Bedrock Edition. You don't have that option, so this is actually going to take. A lot of trial and error. Me just setting this up took a lot of trial and error. I'm going to say that right now, but it's all worth it now. This is actually not too complicated if you really think about it, but it is tedious to set up, which is probably why I don't think a lot of Bedrock Edition map makers have actually utilized this as of yet, at least uh, none that I've actually seen. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how this works and then I'm going to explain to you how you set it up and then at the end I'm going to go ahead and show you the actual command block itself. So first thing we want to do as you can tell I've got myself a birch plank on the ground right here and I have a wall right here with a redstone lamp in the center. So all I have to do is walk directly onto the birch plank and now as you can tell the redstone lamp is not on as of yet if you look up on the top of my screen it's not doing anything but if I go ahead and look at the redstone lamp now it's on look away from the redstone lamp it's off and as you can tell whenever I look away from this redstone lamp it turns off whenever I look at it it turns on now there is obviously a little bit of delay but that's just because of the way the redstone works but it's actually fairly straightforward and if you take a look this is using just a single command block which is actually really interesting as you can tell it's a repeating command block and as I mentioned I'm actually going to be explaining a little bit later as to uh, how this works I will show you later what's actually inside the command block but for right now I'm actually going to explain to you exactly how this command actually ends up working I've got a set of signs to basically explain it so we're actually using the test for command in this uh, particular example, and for pretty much all uh, uh, basically player direction detection, this is the command that you're using. So you put in test for, and by the way, for those of you who don't know, if you actually go inside a command block, you do not actually need the forward slash in order for the command to, in order to run, so just go ahead and uh, know that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to put in the space. Obviously, the science can't actually hold a lot, so I had to. Uh, Put another line then you put in your target now this can be a specific player name you can do at p at a anything you want and then directly after it put in square brackets one open and one closed do not put a space between your target and your square brackets make sure there's no space between them now for the remainder of the command you're going to have to put stuff in between these two square brackets. This is technically known as a component. As far as I'm aware, this is known as a component. And there are a number of components that you have to take into consideration. So here's the first component that you need to put in. Now, depending on what you're doing, uh, this component will change um, for what you're doing. 
you have your x, y, and z coordinates. Those are fairly self-explanatory. Your radius, however, this is how far away from these particular coordinates you have to be in order for it to activate. And if you have a radius of zero, that means you have to be directly on that coordinate. Well, now, what exactly does it mean to be on a coordinate? A lot of people don't actually realize this, but this is actually where your feet are standing. So right now, if I look down at the ground right here, if you look in the top left corner of my screen, it shows my position. I'm at 140. 431. That's where my feet are sitting right now. It's 144.31. So keep that in mind. That's exactly what's going on. So I'm standing right here on 144.32 and it's allowing me to detect player direction. If I'm standing on this block right here, I do the exact same thing. Absolutely nothing. That's because in this command block I have a radius set to zero, which means I have to be directly on it. Now if you have a radius of 1, that means you can be at least one block away and it doesn't matter what direction you can be up a block, you can be to the side of a block, you can be back a block, it doesn't matter. If it's a radius of 1, you can be at least one block away. So that's what the radius is. Now this is where things can get pretty tricky. I'm going to be completely honest. This took me a little bit of figuring out in order to get it to work. And as I mentioned earlier, this took me a lot of trial and error in order to get to work the way I wanted to. So these are the actual components that are detecting the player rotation. And before I go any further, by the way, when you're inside these square brackets, what you want to do is you want to put in your coordinates. So for example, you need to put in x equals and then whatever your x coordinate is. So for where I'm standing right now, it would be x equals 139. Then you put in a comma. Do not put in a space uh, between this and the next section. Then you put in your y equals, in my case, 4, comma, z equals, my case, 40, and then so on and so forth. And as I already explained the radius. So no spaces in between any of them. Otherwise, the command block is not going to be able to read it correctly. And so now I've wasted enough time. Let's go ahead and get into the actual uh, rotation detection part. So this is actually a little bit complicated. So you have RXM, which is the minimum X rotation. This is the lowest point of which you're going to detect the rotation. And the RX is just the max x uh, as far as how uh, far you can actually rotate. Now I've actually got a sign right here that basically tells you how you determine what your x is. So x is basically this. So I'm just basically turning around in circles. This is your x. Just keep that in mind. That is your x. x can be determined in one of two different ways. It can go from negative 180 to 180. Now I don't entirely know what direction that is. That's either north or south. I'm not entirely sure which one it is. But say for example, this right here, I'm looking in this direction. Say for example, this is negative 180. If I actually turn a direct 180, if I'm looking over here, this is a zero. If I turn around again in this direction, this brings me to positive 180. And negative 180 and positive 180 are pretty much the same thing or you can do 0 to 360. So, whereas I said over here, this is 180 and negative 180. This over here is 0, but this over here is also 360. So, there's actually something to keep in mind as far as the X is concerned. And again, X is looking around like this. Now, as far as the Y is concerned, you basically are doing the exact same thing except instead of RXM and RX, you have RYM and RY. So Y is your up and down. So negative 90 on the Y means you are looking straight up at the sun, whereas positive 90 means you're looking straight down at the ground. And I'm actually as far looking down as I possibly can, and I'm also as far up as I possibly can go. So that's what the uh, Y actually is. Now let's take this into practice. Now this is not going to be easy to show off my actual uh, direction while I'm actually looking at the um, redstone lamp. But just keep in mind this is just kind of approximate. So let's go ahead and go into the actual 
command line itself. So this is what we have right here. So we have all the way at the beginning, right here you see where my cursor is right now. This is the test for, this is testing for at P. This is testing for the nearest player. So it's looking for me at 144, 32 with a radius of zero, which means I have to be directly on this birch plank in order for it to be able to correctly detect me. So that's the first part. That one is pretty much self-explanatory. Now, as far as the rest of it, this is where things get really complicated. But just trust me, I was able to figure it out for the purposes of this example. So you have Rx min. Again, this is your minimum, and I have it set to negative 45. You have to make sure this is your lowest number. Then you have your Rx, which is just your maximum this is set to 45 so you have a radius well actually that's not radius you have a distance between negative 45 degrees this is technically measured in degrees by the way to 45 degrees negative 45 degrees to positive 45 degrees on the x why on the other hand well this is obviously going to be a little bit different but it follows the same principle and I have this one set to a rotation Y minimum that's technically what it stands for of negative 32 to a rotation Y maximum even though there's no M right there of 51 and I have this command block set up obviously at a repeat and an always active and as you can tell right here Right below where my cursor is right now, it says, no targets match selector. That's because I am not right there. Now, this co comparator, this is actually what determines whether or not it's actually true or false. If what this command block is outputting runs as true, then this command block will actually turn on. If it is not true, then the command, the command block is going to output false. Therefore, the comparator is going to be off. So I'm actually going to go ahead and break these uh, blocks right here in the center so you guys have an understanding of how this is working. So if I go ahead and stand right here and look at the comparator, now the comparator is on. If I look away from the comparator, it is now currently off. That is exactly how this is working. And as you can tell, it's not easy to tell when you're looking up because, well... That's just because there's nothing to show for it. But as you can tell, that's actually working exactly as it's supposed to be. So again, I cannot stand like right here and have it work because it's looking for me being on this particular block right here. If I go ahead and stand on this block right here, st again, still nothing. And as I walk over, it turns back on and off. And that is literally all there is to this entire command. Now, this is actually, as I mentioned, going to be extremely complicated to try to figure out, but I do believe I explained it to the best of my ability, and if you are still confused on how this works, then what I highly recommend is, yeah, I'm going to recommend this, um, is to re-watch the video at least once or twice, or at least rewind the video to the part where you're confused about, and then above all, just do a little bit of experimentation. And I would love to actually see... Some map makers, I don't know if I'm going to use this anywhere in the near future, but I would love to see some map makers out there actually utilizing this in Bedrock Edition because either they're using it and it's gone under my radar or they don't even know this is actually a thing you can do in Bedrock Edition. But other than that, that's actually where I'm going to go ahead and end off the video. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed If you did, make sure that like button. One more than make sure that subscribe button for future content. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at agencyp 0 to stay updated. This has been Zero Studios. Thank you guys for watching. And with that, I will see you guys later.